are you are still watching ways um, being in HR can be a difficult task to handle because of all the critical tasks that the HR department does um, help keep the business running and successful while there may be some that don't like uh, that department they're vital and essential and sometimes they may not get enough credit for what they do so human resource professional day is a holiday made to change the perspective people have of hr and learn about why their jobs is valuable for any business ah hr department <laughs> <laughs> they are the most hated <laughs> in yeah. every in every company yeah. but hey um i think even for the professionals right now in hr there's a lot of awakening going on there's a lot of changes happening people are mm. a lot more empathetic in yes, their style of leadership uh, yeah. as of as to, opposed as opposed to what it, what was, it was before yes, so before even they are also redefining and changing the face of hr there's this girl that's um, Franca had sent to yeah, me. I think oh, we should bring her. Evie, Nick, uh, Evie Chick. I think she's a oh, HR. Evie Chick. Yeah, I know Evie. She says she's a HR professional. Yeah. It would be nice to have her. And yeah. let's discuss Can why people don't them. love them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends. They have different departments too. Yeah. When I was in the banking industry, I worked in HR in one of the banks and I was a compliance officer. And if you had to be sacked, um, warned yeah, or cautioned. It was my that email. Conversation. Yes. <laughs> it was me they didn't like. If you see my name in your email box, you start crying. <laughs> <laughs> so I know what it is right? to sit on that hated right, seat. Yeah, right, like, right, right, right. But it's but okay. hey, we love it, you guys. It was just anyway. my job, exactly. We love you getting anyway. But you still do recruitment for companies, right? Yes, I, I still run the HR company. Awesome, yeah. awesome. All right, quickly, let's what well, we found money i think you're ready yes i'm so ready okay federal government plans ban on pomo to revive <laughs> the leather industry <laughs> my lovely pomo no <laughs> <laughs> the federal government has said it was proposing a legislation to ban the consumption of animal skin locally known as pomo in the country to revive tenaries so the dg nigerian institute of leather and science technology Niles saria mohammed yakubu said this in abuja on Sat sunday he Niles was set up to promote leather production as provided in the agricultural research institute act of 1975. so the institute conducts research the production and products of leather and the utilization of local tanning materials in the country yakubu stated that this action was necessary to revive the Comatose leather industry in the country said that the habit of eating animal skin, which has no nutritional value, should be stopped to save the industry and boost the nation's economy. So, in other connected news, the chairman of the Nigerian Bar Association Section on Public Interest Development Law, Dr. Oye Kachi Obani, has opposed this move and threatened to sue the federal government if it goes ahead to ban the chewable delicacies. <laughs> popularly known as Pomo in the country. So some Nigerians have also kicked against the proposed plan by the federal government stating that they only started substituting beef and fish with Pomo as a result of the high cost of the protein. Mm. You know, Pomo is expensive now. Yeah. And but what's the value of Pomo? I remember I, that. I remember um, <laughs> President, then President Obasanjo, mm -hmm. there was something around Pomo that he did. He was saying that this thing, it doesn't have any nutrients inside. It does not have. We just like to chew it's it. It's just Let exercise us, of the you, chocolate so it, it muscles. It makes your, your <laughs> some meal. People. No, I eat Pomo in every meal. Really? So I'm going to be one of the people I'm that will be fan, hardly no? hit mm. if they really go ahead with the ban. But for me, I think I support this um, group of people who really want to use it because what we do in Nigeria, especially Africa, so there are two sides of it or to this story. We actually eat our raw materials in this country. Mm. Instead of, you know, trying to process, process it, it, we yeah. eat it. So mm. I understand the ban, but also what's the substitution for the poor right now if they take it out? So sure. I don't know. It's a what very hard one. What, what nutritional value is it giving Ooh, to have the you poor? Ever, because yeah. do you know what it? Do well, you well, know what explain. rice without is? Well, have you me, heard but, of that word before? Rice yes, without. I know. But let me explain something to you. What I'm saying is whether it's there is not there. People need to be conscious now of what we eat. So it's not about eating. Oh, I live it's it. eating you know right. What? It's not every time you'll be looking for nutrients. Sometimes just look for it's some it's big thing in the middle of your plate. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh for mites. Leave, leave okay. for mites, I'm in the house. <laughs> we, we leave you to. Oh, I'm to here for it. 
<laughs> yeah. All right, so no more your story. Still on food, actually. We have this caption that says 25 million Nigerians are suffering from hunger. Oh. So the story has it that National Coordinator of Academic and Research Network for Scaling Up Nutrition in Nigeria, Professor Kola Anigo, has disclosed that no fewer than 25 million Nigerians are suffering from hunger. He lamented that Nigeria is ranked the first in Africa and second in the world in global charts of malnourished children. Mm. And then he stated in Abiyokuta Ogun State, while delivering a keynote speech at the opening ceremony of the 52nd Annual General Meeting of Scientific Conference of Nutrition Society of Nigeria, he said that, the, so that um, there's prevalence, uh, prevalence of malnutrition in Nigeria. There should be prevalence of malnutrition in Nigeria. The insecurity has caused a lot of yeah. instability yes. and has in even further farming. complicated situations. Yeah. I mean, the situation in Ukraine, mm. a lot of food yeah. was coming from that direction. Mm. The climate change, yeah. um, so, so many the complications. The ripple of, this is the ripple yeah. effect. Yeah. And mm. already we were, I mean, coming from where you were saying, talking about one more, yeah. it, it, it goes to show that, look, people are doing anything to survive. Yeah. And if we continue in this trajectory, it's really going to, it can only get worse from here. Mm -hmm. They say it's going to get even worse by January. So by January, we don't even know what the statistics yeah. will be at the yeah. time, the number of people who are malnourished. It's, it's difficult for me to, to capture this thought because we, we still have food, right? So, so we still yes. produce. But in the area of insecurity, I mean, with the bandits, it's up north, it very it's also making it very difficult. And they're just yeah. bringing, they're just throwing some alarm towards this, that if we don't pay attention to it now, yeah. it is going to well, further affect us. Well, they've already said that there will be a famine in the mm. country in mm -hmm. a few months. So. Okay. In fact, there was even uh, another report by the Food and Agriculture Organization of United Nations that said already that 19 countries, including Nigeria, are going to be suffering acute food insecurity Jeez. so it's um it's a it's, it's a very good. disturbing hmm. situation right yeah. now Alrighty, That's on that terrible. note the federal government through the national hmm. universities commission on monday afternoon withdrew it um yeah. circular which ordered vice chancellors pro chancellors and governing council to reopen the federal universities now they have not said w what led to this withdrawal but we know all know because I had listened to the ASU <laughs> chairman saying that they are just joking. Because how would you order them to go and reopen the university and you give them an ultimatum when the case is still, you know, in court, in court and all of that going on? Yeah. And you, you know, so from even what I, because I listened to an interview he was having with um, a journalist, he was saying that the only person that seems a bit rational in trying to resolve the issue is the speaker. Bajabi Amila, mm. you know, and all of that. So whatever it is that has happened between the time they gave that ultimatum, because they had given that ultimatum um, sometimes last week, mm. right, for them to go back and reopen the university mm. till now. So Nobody whatever it is, somebody's, somebody's brain has just been recorrected. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't know the reason, but hey, that's the update on ASU. And we'll just keep the updates going because, I mean, we do not have a choice at this yeah. point. I mean, All right, so... It's unimaginable that it's seven, going on eight, eight months. months. Yes, eight It's months. never happened like this Absolutely. Before. All right, so let's go on a break. When we come back from the break, let's discuss leadership, right? The kind of leaders that we need right now as Nigerians. Stay with us. We'll be right back.